Brian Wagenigan. Dude, I really think that's how you say his name. I refer to him as my wingman, and he refers to me as his wingman. We've had like this special bond for years now. I mean, what can I say that hasn't been said about him? Really underrated, one of the most incredible skateboarders I've seen in person. It's pretty much badass. Dude, traveling with him, it's really freaking funny. We were in Berlin. It really isn't funny, actually. <laughs> Dude, I've basically been to jail three times for skateboarding. It's insane. The first time it happened, it was in Austin, Texas. You know, it's a spot that people skate often. Basically, wrong place at the wrong time. I was just rolling around the spot, and all of a sudden, these two cops come out of nowhere. They're like, hey guys, you guys can't skate here, you know? We're like, cool, thanks, man. All no worries. Sure enough, Sergeant Bucko just freaking comes out of nowhere, straight drives up on the campus, screeches to a halt. He just basically goes crazy on us. Because those cops were rookies, you know, he told them, yeah, we need to make examples out of them, and boom. In jail for two and a half days. I, I was so over it. The second time was in Chicago. It was like me, Chris Cole, Chad Barty. We were skating through, I guess it was a government building, but we were skating back to our hotel. Boom, busted, like security guards hold us there. They're holding one of our buddies, like he was on the ground and they tackled him. Dude, they didn't let him go. I didn't want to leave a wounded soldier. I just chilled out and waited. Cops come, super lame, put us in a paddy wagon, go to jail, get out in a day. That's number two. This is last year, 2011. We're at a spot in LA and we get busted by the cops there. They kick us out, but then they hold us there. And I don't know why cops are so lame to skateboarders. It's insane. There's people murdering each other, the gnarliest stuff going down. And for some, ha for some reason, they would just rather go after us. Anyhow, cop takes our IDs, dude comes back. You know, he's like, are you Jose? I'm like, yeah. He's like, it looks like you have a warrant here, buddy, in Texas. Sure enough, this whole thing stems from Texas, like in 2007, basically a gnarly warrant. I thought I had gotten a lawyer. The lawyer basically stole my money and he was a fraud. I get put in the back of the cop car and I'm stressing out because I thought I had to go to Twin Towers. I'm done. But it was a Sunday and they tried to call Texas and it was all good because they were closed. So the dude's all, dude, today's your lucky day. Thank goodness I got it all handled. I got a legit lawyer and it's all done. For some reason, I'm just like a magnet for cops. So now every time we get kicked out, like dude, as soon as I see a cop, you know, I pretty much surrender. Kids, don't talk back to cops. Just be cool, man, because they could really screw you up. It's me, Chris Haslam, and my buddy, Jerry Wan. I'm obviously lead vocals. My buddy, Jerry's, uh, he's a guitarist slash keyboard guy. Haslam's guitarist. Our band name's Dolphin Raper. I laid down a track. It was a Temple of the Dog cover. I'm going hungry. You guys will hear that pretty soon. Dude, it's a heavy one. That's all we got laid down so far, but there's more to come. My aunt, she got me a job working at a mental institution called the uh, Agnews Developmental Center. They had two facilities. One facility was old, it was abandoned. It was just tons of buildings and they were all vacant. What we had to do was go in there, clear every building out, desks and chairs and stuff like that. That building was also built in the early 1800s. I forgot what year that San Francisco earthquake was. It was like 1901, I think. There was a huge earthquake in the San Francisco area. Thousands of patients died in there and the nurses were ordered to uh, bury the bodies underneath the buildings. We would hear the gnarliest noises coming out of there. Like we'd be working in one room and we would either hear like footsteps just running and you know, we would freak out super bad. And we'd also hear um, doors just slam out of nowhere because there was like huge steel doors. It was kind of like a prison and it would echo so gnarly in there. And what was crazy also, we had to remove a surgery table. This table was used to like perform lobotomies and stuff on patients like that. It was the gnarliest, most eerie thing. Shit man, just dealing with like, you know, like weird paranormal stuff. Cause I don't believe in that stuff. We had to work in one of the basements in the main buildings. I remember walking down, there was like rows and rows of bathtubs and they were all covered except for the head part. So I think that they would stick patients in there and like either fill it up with super cold water to see what would happen to them or to see what their reactions were. Some sort of torture. Dude, it was really insane. Our other job there was to go to the to go to the now functioning facility and um, remove broken furniture from patients' rooms or furniture that had feces all over it. I'm actually really glad that I worked there. You know, it was like an eye opener. It was one of those things that, um, you know, I think people should experience. Skateboarders, a lot of skateboarders should experience work. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just think just having the experience of like actually having a real job. You know, a lot of people have never worked a day in their lives. I think it's going to be a huge reality check. You know, when the day comes when they actually do have to get a real job, I think it's going to really freak them out. You know, I'm glad that I got multiple jobs and um, shit, I could go back to being a waiter. A white girl. Any girl is better than Willie Santos for sex. He stands up, he's, what the fuck? I mean, he's yelling. I, I honestly, and like he basically yelled me out the door. <laughs>